Okay. Um, good evening. Uh, and welcome to another episode of American Cultural Shifts. My guest this evening is Jenny Brigham. Jenny, thank you for, for joining us. Uh, Jenny and I have been friends for, I think, going on five years. Is that about right, mm -hmm. Jenny? Yep. And uh, I, I'm going to give a little bit of, of background about this episode um, and kind of uh, go, you know, as a, as a prelude to what we're going to talk about. So this is going to be a, uh, we're going to talk about difficult things tonight. Um, so we're going to talk about kind of three things broadly. We're going to talk about um, biological uh, sex. We're going to talk about gender identity and we're going to talk about sexuality. And while, while many people don't like to talk about that in a podcast uh, series called American Cultural Shifts, if you don't talk about um, uh, something like this, issues like this, I think you're ignoring um, something that has uh, an issue that is really changing um, in our culture. So uh, Jenny, if I can just tell uh, folks a, a, a little bit, I, I know uh, you have been married to your wife, Kayla, for, is it two years now? Is that right? um four years four years okay very good you and and you were married to a, a man before that and had two uh children yes blaze and zarin and zarin and they are how old blaze is eight and zarin just turned five today eight and five. Oh, happy birthday to you okay and so um Jenny and I, over the last several years uh, at work, uh, Jenny works in the same office that I do um, in neurosurgery, and she and I have had several conversations over the last five years, probably dozens of them, about these three issues. Yeah. And I, I must tell, I've told Jenny this before, uh, and I, I want to say it on the podcast, but I have never gone away from one of those conversations with you and not learned something. And, and I always appreciate that you are very, you're very open uh, with me. You're, you're, you, you have, you have thoughts that are different than mine. But I, I want to say I think we have both been respectful of of each other's thoughts, and, oh, and the conversations have been good. And so I was very, um, I was very anxious to have you uh, come on and, and and share some time with me on this. So uh, yeah. thank you again. Now, with Absolutely. that being said, I also will say that. Um, and, <laughs> Jenny, you and I are not going to make any friends on this tonight. Right? <laughs> no um, friends needed. We have each other. Yeah. That's, so, um, so, so many people are not going to agree with me, the things that I say or the questions I'm going to ask. Many are not going to agree with you and probably many are not going to agree with either one of us. <laughs> um, and that's, that's okay. Because as I said at the beginning, if you're going to talk about things that are really shifting in our culture and you don't talk about this um i, I think you're ignoring a, a big issue and uh, look if, if 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 the entire country was made up of people of the same race and sexuality and identity and so forth then we wouldn't have any problems right uh, but uh, mm -hmm. that's not the way it is and so <laughs> you you live in this country and you got to deal with things that are difficult and maybe messy but that's how it is and so mm -hmm. that's what we're going to do here. And, uh, and, and maybe, I don't know, maybe we, we both lose some friends in the process, but <laughs> that's, that's what happens. <laughs> okay. So, so Jenny, I'm just going to jump right into it. Okay. And, right. and, and you Ready. and I have, 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 again, have talked a little bit about this before, but as uh, I'll ask this first question. Um, so there are, there are, or without a doubt, there are traits, in, in human populations that are entirely genetic, right? So the color of your skin, the texture of your hair, the, your facial features, et cetera, there is, these, these are all things that are not left to choice. These are chance per se. In other words, the mm -hmm. DNA you get is the DNA you get, the mom and dad that you have is the mom and dad you have, and that's what you look like. There mm -hmm. are other things um, that while not being a part of your DNA are also not maybe entirely your choice. For example, uh, if you are born into an environment, into a neighborhood uh, or a community that there's 
drug abuse, violence, and so forth, uh, while you may not choose uh, to, to, to live that lifestyle, that environment is going to influence or, or maybe you might say limit the choices you have and you incorporate those lessons that you're seeing into your, into your life. And then there are things that I would say are purely choice. Whether you want to have a pet, whether you want to keep a garden, um, entirely up, up, <laughs> up to you. Okay, so those, those three things that we just mentioned, biological sex, gender, or gender identity, mm -hmm. uh, and sexuality, in your opinion, and nobody really knows the answer to any of this, Jenny. So that's why it's, yeah. your opinion is just as valid as anybody mm -hmm. else's. Are those, are those genetic things? Are they environmental things? Or are they pure choice? And you could take either one of those three first and <laughs> start off. I think, I mean, yes, there are things that it is purely by chance like you said with the environment things like that but when it comes to like gender identity you know sexuality all that stuff I mean I think that your environment does play into maybe when someone might come out how comfortable they are coming out to their family and things like that but I mean do I think that if I lived in a, you know, different community, I maybe wouldn't have been gay. No, mm -hmm. cause I grew up Catholic. I went to Catholic school and catechism mm -hmm. and I did that for years and I still ended up being gay and right. marrying a woman. So, right. but I mean, it definitely influenced when I came out and how I came out mm -hmm. and you know, leaving the Catholic community behind to, you know, and then right. waiting several more years after that. But I mean, I strongly believe that, you know, your, I don't believe gay, being gay is a choice. I don't believe that those who choose later on in life to change their gender identity, I don't believe I believe that they're choosing to make the outside of themselves reflect what's inside, but I don't think what's inside had ever been anything different, even if on the outside it looked different. Okay, so so let me make sure I'm, I'm understanding you then. So you're so so biological sex, yeah, you're, that's that's in your DNA, mm -hmm. right? So you're you're an XX. Uh, if you're female, you're an XY, if you're a male, and then there are, of course, you know, a, a, a few uh, that have, ap uh, you know, they're genetically are neither. Yes, XX yes, or XY. yeah. I mean, we're, we're many not really talking medical, about, yeah, not talking about, about the medical issues. side. Right. Well, but then, so, so that's, that's the, and then you would say the, the gender identity that you choose, as well as your mm -hmm. sexual orientation, that is choice. Yes. And I believe that it also evolves over time. I or, mean, or no, I, I said that wrong. You would say that that's, that is, that is, that's wired into the DNA. Oh no. Yeah. Sorry. Not, not choice. That is just who you are. I mean, it's, it's wired into me. I knew from the time I was a little girl that I was attracted to women, but much like any young kid, you don't fully understand those feelings right. until you're an adult. And I mean, I could say strongly at the age of five, I had a crush on a girl. I could say I had my first girl kiss when I was seven with my best friend. I mean, normal little kid stuff, but it wasn't overly sexualized like right. a lot of adults bring into the content when you talk about gender identity and sexual orientation. It all becomes so graphic right. when it doesn't really have to be. And, and, and Jenny, I, I, by no means are you, am I asking you to speak for the entire gay community here, but I mean, the, of, of the people that you know in the gay community, do you feel mm -hmm. like most of them have your story? In other words, just like you said, like I knew there was no choice in this. It was, it was hardwired in, in my mm -hmm. mind. Uh, do, do you hear that story? I'll say a I lot. Mean, it, it, yes and no I mean it's with 
it's with everything else in life. It, it all comes with experience. I mean, sure. you can, and it also depends on the person. I am one that I have a hard time making decisions. Go to an ice cream shop. I spend 20 minutes looking at which flavor I want. So, I mean, you know, when, especially if you want to talk about like things that are socially hardwired, it's boy, girl. So when you're taught that as a young girl that I will find my prince and I will marry him and we will have babies. And then when you get into your, you know, upper years, do you have a boyfriend? Oh, you like this boy? I mean, it's constantly being imprinted on me that which boy am I interested in? Uh, that was that was what socially was expected. Yes, exactly. Socially in your, expected. In your family. And, yeah, family, friends, because once you say, oh, no, I like a girl, all uh, adults around are like, oh, my gosh, what are you going to do with that girl? Like, mm -hmm. probably the same thing that I would still be doing with a boy, little kisses and tiny notes. I mean, th that's, I think, why people are so uncomfortable talking about it is they don't want to know the nitty gritty details, which I don't want to know about your nitty gritty details either, which is so, I mean, again, I feel like it's hypersexualized when you talk about gender identity and sexual orientation. And that's why it's so uncomfortable. I think if, you know, in some households that you might see where it's very open, it's very fluid, be who you are, whoever you want to be with. And I feel like it can definitely open the door to those that are going to grow up and be part of the community. But I mean, gay, gay people have straight kids all the time. And again, right. it's not by chance. It's by, or it's not by choice. It's, right. you know, it's what's hard hardwired into them. And, but I mean, talking about it more, getting it out there, creating more resources to younger kids, because you don't find out when you're 18 that, Oh, I like women. I like men, whatever. It's, it, it starts from being in your adolescence. I mean, crushes on the cute prince on TV and, and liking that boy band or liking this rocker chick. I mean, that all happens in adolescence. And when you limit those resources to young kids to be able to talk about it, you're cutting off a huge part of not only helping a kid find their own identity in every aspect, but limiting their even understanding when it comes to, you know, health. And, you know, when you take sex ed classes in high school, it goes, it, it didn't prepare me for anything when it came to having a woman to woman relationship that prepared me with how to have sex with boys. Right. It, it's, okay. it just, yeah, you, you just, you limit so much and you may, you know, when you're not implementing this, it, it just makes it harder for others to, you know, find their way. But I mean, I do have friends that, you know, have come out very, very young and their family was more open about it. I've had friends that come out young and their parents are not okay with it and they lose contact for years. I mean. Right. So do you, I, I, I I, I almost hesitate to go down this rabbit hole, um, <laughs> but I guess I will. You know, so so there's this uh, this issue in Florida right now where the Florida state legislature, uh, you know, passed a, a law. It's it's, they've, it's called in the in the in, you know in the newspaper. It's called uh, Don't mm -hmm. Say Gay, but it is yep. my understanding, if I've read it correctly, is that in the public schools there will be no uh, teachings about sex education between the ages of, mm -hmm. between kindergarten and third third grade i think mm -hmm. and, and i and, and that has been very controversial obviously do, yeah would you would would you say do you think uh, in your mind is kindergarten through third grade is that too early is that an appropriate time to start talking about those three things biological sex gender identities sexual orientation I mean, the, the parent in me wants to say, gosh, that's so young yeah. to, to start talking about these things. Yeah. But then when I look at my own household, these things are already talked about right. with my children. I mean, my, my five-year-old now, <laughs> you know, can fully say I have two moms 
And when his friends ask me about it, I just say, that's just how our family is. I mean, and they're like, oh, okay. I think that's cool. And I mean, even my older son's friends, you know, they're eight, nine, 10, a little bit more knowledgeable of, you know, things to a certain point, they're boys. So, you know, but I, I still get the same question. You're a lesbian, you have two moms, that is really cool. And then that's it. And I mean, there's no further questions. There's no them needing to wrap their head around it because as children, their knowledge is so limited. Right. But I think introducing that, even if it's something subtle in classes, like same sex couples in children's books, there's nothing wrong with it. And I mean, I wouldn't be opposed if those were being read to my children and things were being taught about just different family dynamics. So, so Jenny, when, when, when you and I have had conversations before about this, I mean, I, I shared with you that I, I just thought that those topics were most appropriate in the individual child's home. Mm -hmm. Now that's, that's me. Right. And I, I say that because we've had those conversations in my home with our children. But I would also quickly recognize that not every kid has either the understanding parents or maybe even the opportunity to have mm-hmm. those kinds of, uh, I would say, intimate, difficult conversations with people that are supposed to love them unconditionally. Yeah. Right. So, and, and think, so maybe that yeah. that happens in the school. I guess my issue then was third grade, really? I mean... Maybe not I, biological I, it, sex, it, it maybe, is, but those other two, come on, those are, those are hard. Those are yeah. messy subjects and to I talk mean, about. I can't remember, and I mean, you know, I'm only 28, but it's like, I can't remember a time that I was in school in kindergarten through third grade where it was ever talked about. Right. I mean, also, you know, first through third grade, I was in Catholic school but but I mean I did transition to a public school and even some things like sexual education just general health puberty those things I don't they were brought up in fourth fifth grade because that's usually around the time so I think I I still think maybe first second kindergarten too young but I think third grade would be a good time to introduce it and parents can have the right to opt out just like with anything else but, but some parents aren't, and I don't speak for all parents and I don't speak for all gay people, but someone has to start having these difficult conversations and they're not that difficult because it, it's not, you know, when you tell a kid how babies are made, you don't get into the nitty gritty details. You go through the basics of it. And I mean... So it's like, if you're going to start introducing just maybe little things in third grade and then expanding it and then in, you know, later on junior high, high school, having sexual education, not giving the opportunity for those to learn how to have safe sex with same sex couples. I mean, why limit our, our children on how much medical information they could possibly have? especially with you and I working in the medical field, I want my kids to know, like, if you get a bad cut, this is how you need to hold it, you know, so you don't get hurt. Or when you scrape something, make sure you put, you know, antibiotic ointment and wash it out. And I mean, because we have the knowledge of, you know, saying things like infections. So we, you know, we know how to take certain precautions. Why would I want to limit what kind of precautions my child would have to take to stay safe? I see what you're saying. Because, you know, STIs, STDs, unwanted pregnancy, all those things can be avoided if you're talking to your children. I mean, obviously some kids are going to do what they're going to do, but you can try. I mean, that's all you can do as a parent is you can try to limit them getting hurt, catching something, because regardless of if I or anyone as a parent feels differently about it or anything, if your kid is gay, they're gay they're trans they're trans if they're whatever they're whatever and there's nothing you can ever do about that but you can make sure that they have everything possible to be safe and be protected do you think 
Jenny, and this is shifting back a little bit to our mm -hmm. my my first question. Do you think within those those three issues, maybe not biological sex, because we I think we 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 both agree that that's kind of hard hardwired in the DNA. But with regard to identity and sexual orientation, do you think that that is something that is fluid in in someone? In other words, at different moments in their life, can they take on different gender identity, different orientations? Oh, absolutely. Um, and and you would say that is so. So tell me how that squares then with you. You were saying, you know, that this is this is hardwired gender. You know, they're expressing mm -hmm. what's hardwired their sexual orientation that is hardwired. So how, how do you square that with the, your, your notion that it's also fluid? <laughs> so I, and I mean, it's gonna also just be dependent on the person. And I wanna say, uh, I, can, I can only give an answer based off the knowledge I have at the time, which is the knowledge that I have about myself is I am a lesbian. And that's just what I am. But I mean, if I look back on what my sexual orientation, what my identity was through the last 28 years of my life, I would have said straight. Then I would have said I was curious. Then I would have labeled myself as bi-curious because I wasn't sure. And then bisexual. And I stayed with, I remember come, trying to come out to my mom saying, and I chickened out at the last second and I said, I'm bisexual. And she was like, it's a phase. So I was just, so I just kind of held on to the being bisexual. And then until I finally did come out and said, I'm gay. And that's just I who see. I am. That's who I've always been. But at so, certain times, you sometimes limit the information you give the people around you okay. because you're not sure how they're going to react. So, so you're saying that the, the your gender identity your sexuality was always there it was it was hardwired in but you uh what do you want to say what you you might have covered it up you, with various layers yeah of you have to what you yourself, wanted to project yourself. or you felt comfortable projecting into your family and circle of friends yeah okay. so and i think that that changes and it's also i mean when it comes to people how they might choose to identify themselves it can also depend on the partner that they're with Oh, okay. I mean, I can say that I'm a lesbian and I'm mon monogamous, but if I were to be polyamorous and I have extended my relationship with different people and they identify as something different, like non-binary or as male, it wouldn't really make sense for me to say I'm a lesbian. I like women, but I'm bending that for you who identifies as male. So I might reassess what I'm interested in and say, okay, I'm pansexual because it really just matters about the person on the inside, not what you're identifying as. And it, nice. it, it can change. And, you know, because as a lesbian, and if I were, my wife were to somehow go through a sexual change and become a man, it, people would ask me, how are you a lesbian when your wife's transitioned and is now male? And to answer, I'd be like, well, then I guess I'm pansexual because it doesn't really matter what they identify as. I care about the person on the inside. Oh, so, so, yeah, so it, that's interesting. So I never thought about that. Um, yeah, so but, it's but, just but, but that's so your gender identity could be fluid, really, depending on the mm -hmm. person that you're with and what how, how they how they identify. Mm -hmm. So so that that would all that would square with your this is genetic. This is hardwired. But I, because of whatever filter I, I, I put on it, based on who mm -hmm. I'm with and my circumstances and so forth, I could identify in a different, in a different way, as a different sex. Yeah, okay. and, and that's why I think that or it's, it's, I think that it, that's why the LGBT has expanded to the QIA plus is that it, it is a spectrum. It is so fluid that... I, I mean, there's just, again, it's so many different layers and it just depends on the person that you're with. And it depends on what you also are okay with saying what you are at the end of the day. Okay. All right. So, so I'm going to, I'm going to press this a little bit further then. Jenny. So, okay. So tell me in, in your mind, how is say uh, gender 
or orientation. How is that different from, say, age or race or height? And my contention here is um, I, I'm 54 years old. I can't say I'm 24 years old. Right? Mm -hmm. there, I mean, I can say that, but I can't make that change. I can say I am uh, a, a Hispanic male, but clearly, for those of you <laughs> who are watching, I, I'm not Hispanic. <laughs> I could say I want to be seven foot tall and uh, I want to be, you know, I want to play for the, I don't know, the senior basketball league, you know, at center or whatever. No, right? No. It doesn't work. Everybody no. knows, everybody would acknowledge there's nobody that would be confused by any of those things with just a, even a, a, a glancing pass mm -hmm. at me. So tell me then, how do you think, given that what you've said about mm -hmm. uh, gender identity and sexuality being being hardwired, how are they different from, from say those three things? I, I would say they're different because what I am and who I am are two completely different things. What I am is I am 28. I am 5'5". Five five. I am, you know, short. <laughs> like, that's just, that's what I am. I'm a human being. Okay. But who I am, who, who I identify is as is completely different. And, you know, you, I know, especially on like the racial issue, there was, you know, people Tanning, trying to identify as a different race, trying to identify as a right. different thing. You can't do that. I mean, because if you go on Ancestry and you take a DNA, again, DNA, you take a DNA test, it's going to tell you exactly what you are made up of. But again, what yes. I am and who I am are different. Okay, but but Jenny, I, so so I want to I wanna just pause for a minute here. Okay, so <laughs> I agree. I agree with what you're saying. Like, you cannot go on my... <laughs> My 23 and me or any, and, and if you looked at my genetic profile, which I, 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 anybody could do, I guess, um, it's, it's very clear what I, do, okay. Yes. But in this case, so gender identity, at least as I think about it would be, uh, a moment where you say, I don't care what the DNA tests say. Okay, mm -hmm. I may be genetically uh, male. I'm an XY. There's no question, but I want to be treated like a female. XX. Okay, and I want you to ignore my genetics, and I want you to treat me this way. Okay, so tell me again, how do you think about that? Like, isn't isn't is the logic to the extent there is a logic? I mean, I consistent. <laughs> Are you saying that as you're still going to look exactly how you look right now and go on the way you are, or are you going to go through the process of matching? What, I, what, I'm, what I'm saying is, Jenny, if, if, if you say my gender identity is mm -hmm. separate from my biological sex, okay, if that's yes. the contention, then what you got to do is you got to say, okay, I know what the genetics are, but what I'm telling you is it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what I'm saying is those other three things, age, race, height, genetic. Yeah. Okay. Um, I can't get people, I, 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 it would not be socially acceptable for me to say, I want you to ignore those things about me. I know it's genetic, but I don't, I don't pay attention to it. So tell me why, why, why is gender different than those things? Oh man. So, and I, again, I don't speak for like the transgender yes. community because I'm not transgender right. and all that, but I do have strong opinions when it comes to trans rights, mm -hmm. the trans community, because, you know, like everyone has a right to ask to be called by the pronouns of their choosing. However, it's a choice and nobody by any means has to respect that or acknowledge it. 
no no one else has to respect respect what correct they want. nobody yeah i can okay. ask you to okay. refer yeah. to me as jesse and i'm a man i can yeah. ask you to do that right. whether you do that or not that's your choice right. but all i can do is ask that you would be open minded and respectful enough to honor the friendship we had yeah. And call me by my correct, by what I feel are my correct pronouns and my correct name, because that's what will make me feel whole. And I, I think that when you, when you're asking people to do that, you know, it, it's one, I, I get the public, I get, you can't force anyone to do that. And nobody's forcing anyone to do that, but it, you are ex I mean, yes, there are people that expect it and right. feel that they are entitled to it. I am not one of those people because I, yeah. I, I, I would just hope that whoever I would tell this to would respect and honor me enough to do that yeah. for me. But that's their choice. But then it's also my choice to end the friendship and be say, right. well, I don't need this in my life. And, and then again, that's my choice. It's yeah. No, I, I, but, I think that's, I'm, I'm glad you said it that way, Jenny, because I think you're getting at really what is one of the big thorns in this argument and in and, and this debate, I should say. And that is that, yeah, you know, so, so, you know, there's this, I, we, you and I have talked about this. There's, there's this concept of the golden rule and the golden mm -hmm. rule is a biblical thing, but it's kind of interlaced in, in American law. And, and it's that treat others as you as, as, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So treat as you would want to be treated, if I can mm -hmm. paraphrase it that way. But in this case, when you say, okay, I want you to ignore the genetics. I want you to treat me like I want to be treated. That's, uh, some would refer to it as the platinum rule. That is, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I deserve to be treated as I want to be treated because I'm special. And, no. <laughs> and, and and that's, I, I think that's, and, and I mean, I, I that's not just, you know, some sort of philosophical little debate we're having here. I mean, this plays out in, um, so so I'm sure you you, you heard about the, the swimmer from the University of Pennsylvania, who was mm -hmm. a genetic male, says, I, I want to be treated as a female. And mm -hmm. so the, the, the NCAA swimming people said, yeah, okay, fine. And, and that individual Leah something or other won the, mm -hmm. the the NCAA championship for women now so I, I completely agree with you like Jenny if you came up to me or anybody came up to me and said hey I was Jenny I'm now Jesse you and I are friends I'm not gonna be a jerk to you I like you I, I <laughs> want to continue to be your friend and so I would go yeah, yeah sure, fine but if but then the, where, where it becomes more complicated is so what's the government supposed to do? What is the, 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 the body writ large supposed to do to acknowledge mm -hmm. your desire to be, in our hypothetical, Jesse? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and that is, and, and so you don't, you, what I'm hearing you say is, hey, I, I you know, I don't, I, I don't really agree with that either. Is that, is that right? And, I, and, I, and yeah, and I, and I don't, and I think that we as a country still have a ways to go to figure this out. I don't think it's going to be figured out today. I don't think it's going to be figured out tomorrow. I think that we still have a long way to go when it comes to gender rights and, mm -hmm. and trans rights and everything else and, and how we're going to move forward as a country and how to categorize, categorize these things. Because that's basically what we all have always done. It's been boys versus girls His, historically it was blacks versus white i mean right. now it's transgender versus you know genetically birthed whatever so i just think that just like before when we fought for you know interracial marriage when we fought for right. you know same-sex marriage um women's rights women right to vote women right to work everything else and now you know, we just need to figure out what the next step is as a country on how are we going to acknowledge these other human beings that are part of the, you know, part right. of the United States of America that are part yeah. of our country. 
how, what are we going to do to help them feel included? Because they are just as equal to me as I am to you. Yeah. And, and I so, think that now we need to figure out what the next step is as a country to, to either have transgender Olympics or trans teams or start putting a weight limit on certain sports and height limits on certain sports to make it so it's more equal. Because if you're worried about a someone who was genetically male at birth, being female on a female team, being six foot tall and a good foot over the other girls, then start putting start putting more limitations on what it takes to make the team other than just what you are and your okay. gender is let me let me let me back that up just a little bit let's okay. uh, uh, so so let me ask you this okay so so since uh let's see since 19 i think it was was it 64 i think it was 64 you know there have been federal laws that prohibit discrimination um in employment voting, education, public accommodation based on race, color, religion, sex, including sexual orientation and gender identity. Yes. Do you, do you feel as a married lesbian woman in 2022, do you feel protected by those laws? Do you feel like it's, it's out there? I don't, I, 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 well, just go ahead. Tell me, tell me how you feel. No, I mean, because yeah, the law's there, but I mean, there's a lot of laws for everything else and that still hasn't stopped anyone from committing a crime. It's not going to stop me from getting judged or discluded from something or my kids be, you know, cut off from other kids because their parents find out that their friend has gay moms. And then, I mean so sure a job can't deny me of employment due to me being gay but it doesn't change the fact that once I receive that job I then have to come out to every single person in that job and make sure that they're all okay with it because, because that's if they what weren't I, okay then it would be it would be difficult for you Yes, because I've worked with people in the past and even in our office that haven't been okay with it. And it was made very known to me and it was very uncomfortable. And I was told that, you know, it wasn't what Jesus wanted and it wasn't the right way, but I'm cool. So just don't hit on me. And it's like, you know, so stipulations, things like that, they're still going to happen, whether a law now exists or not. And you know, it wasn't until it was 1967, I think, when they added it was gender the, discrimination. Yeah. yeah. The gender discrimination. Later, yeah. But it wasn't until 2000. Gosh, I had it written down. Oh, you're talking 2015. About yeah. Oh, okay. For like gay marriage and everything like that. And, but even yeah. back to, being feeling protected sure i can't be denied that anymore but that won't change anyone's personal bias when it comes to the topic yeah. because that matters when it comes to renting someone a house renting someone giving someone a job doing anything else because just as you'd look at that person who you know like you said before grew up in you know, a poor neighborhood or something like that. Someone who was applying for a job that didn't have a car. I'd probably hire the person with the car because I know that they have reliable transportation to get right. to work. If I'm someone that that person who's interviewing doesn't, feels very strongly against gays, they will find a reason not to hire me. Yeah. Yeah, I get, I hear exactly because what you're saying. that's just I, how I it is. It. You know, I've, and with every aspect there... of my life. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've had to ask out there teachers, can't protect you from people's personal bias, bias. And, and, and feelings, and, mm -hmm. and that and that is, uh, leaves you feeling vulnerable. Even though the law is on yeah. your side, you're still vulnerable. Vulnerable because yeah, because I mean, they, even living here, you know, Midwest Bible Belt, I, I still have to ask babysitters. You know, are you comfortable watching comfortable. a child of a gay couple? 
I have to ask teachers and make sure that they're okay with it. Cause I don't want my child to be singled out. And I'm the type of person that I've made it a point in my life to come out immediately to everyone I meet mm -hmm. because in there's no point in hiding myself. And I'd rather know right off the bat if I'm, if someone's not going to like me and that no matter what I do, they're just not going to like me right. and, you know, not waste my time on that person. Even I think it was, I remember on the Oprah Winfrey show when El, it was right after Ellen DeGeneres came out and everything. And Oprah asked her, you know, why did you feel like this was so important? Why did you feel like you had to come out? Why did it, why did everyone have to know it was your own personal business? Mm -hmm. Because everyone asks, who are you married to? Who are you seeing? Who's this? And, and the fact that she said, because it's okay. It's okay that I'm gay. Yeah. And, and I, and that's how I stand by things is that I'm, it's okay that I'm gay. And I just tell people right off the bat. And if they're not okay with it, then I haven't wasted my time and walking on eggshells to make someone else feel comfortable when I personally have spent several years feeling uncomfortable and being made to feel uncomfortable because someone else was uncomfortable. <laughs> so yeah, I, I mean, yeah, great. I can sue someone now <laughs> if they, if they, right. if they decide to deny me a job and it's really apparent that it's because I'm a homosexual, but I mean, it's not going to get me that job. So right. It, right. It, I, I just still think as a country, we have a, a long way to still go before that's not going to be something that I have to second guess. So, okay. So that, that's a good segue into the next question I was going to ask you. So, you know, for, for hundreds of years in this, in this country and other countries as well, but we'll, we'll focus on the United States. There were laws that banned homosexual activity. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that meant that marriage between a same sex couple was illegal. And, yes. you know, it was, uh, I think 1986, there was a case. I mean, I was alive in 1986. I was, uh, uh, I, I would have been considered an adult in 1986. <laughs> right. So I'm sort of complicit in this in a way, I suppose. Um, and, and, and so there was, this was not okay. In 2003, the Supreme Court uh, sort of famously reversed uh, those prior cases and it became legal uh, for uh, same-sex couples to become married. So my question for you is this, Jenny, d knowing that history and knowing how our culture, as represented by this Supreme Court shift in decision, as an American, does that make you feel good? Like, okay, hey, things change, right? Or does it make you feel like, God, it took forever? <laughs> I mean, saying I'm proud of the fact that we've moved forward as a country is, it's bittersweet. Because I sometimes like to make like a parallel also when it comes to races if you were to ask any african-american person if they were proud that slavery doesn't exist anymore it's like what kind of answer do you think you're gonna get it's it's yeah great i'm yeah, glad right, it doesn't right. exist anymore but it's really crappy that it happens and you know we're still dealing with the backlash of people not being okay with it and you know so you know things trickle down as with each generation and you know, hopefully eventually it'll, yeah, something of the past, but I mean, I'm happy, sure. I'm happy that I can't be arrested or sentenced to death for right. being gay, but you know, it doesn't change that it happened or that it continues to happen even in other countries that there, you know, you can still be sentenced right. to death for being gay and it's 2022 and that's still happening. And I mean, it's not so happening as you, as everywhere, you talk with, but say, uh, uh, if you have older uh, gay friends, I mean, do they talk about the generational change? Uh, you know, do, do, do they feel, Hey, it's, it's more accepted now. I don't feel, as you said, I'd like I'm walking on eggshells all the time or, or no, is it, a, is it, does it still feel 
uncomfortable. As I uncomfortable, mean, I should say. You know, you get, it also kind of depends on where they were from, where they grew up, oh, who yeah. their family was. Because, I mean, even my my wife's grandma, who is well into her 80s, um, I mean, she's fully supportive, always has been her whole entire life has been supportive of the gay community and gay rights and everything like that. But I mean, if you asked the 85 year old next to her, you would get an entirely different story. And um, but yeah, so I, I mean, I think that if you were to ask older couples, they would probably tell you that, yeah, it's sure it's easier now because it's more talked about and maybe we're not getting stoned, but, but it, you know, it doesn't change the fact that it was and still continues to be a very sensitive topic. Yeah. Do you, do you think, Jenny, is this something, you know, there, there's, a, there's a saying that, you know, uh, nobody really changes their mind. It's just that their generation dies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is that, is, is that, is that sort of your perspective here? Or, I mean, and I, and I, I'll, I'll ask this, is, do you, do you feel like, have you seen people in your own life, in your circle or your family, have they changed their mind about homosexuality during your lifetime or even during, during, after you came out? Um, I mean, I would say yes and no, like, even coming back to like my mom, for example, you know, my mom had gay friends. She had lots of gay friends. My uncle was gay. I mean, it was, it was known to me that they were gay. I, I mean, it was such an okay thing because, and those were my mom's friends and, but it's like, but still at the end of the day, when it came to our family, we were Catholic and we don't do that in our house. It's okay if everyone else does it, but we don't do that. And so it's like, but I mean, over the years, that obviously changed. Not that she had a choice, but, but I, I mean, it just, it just kind of varies. And it also depends on how that person's going to view their relationship with another person. You know, right. do you want a relationship with me or not because if my mom and my parents hadn't been supportive then they wouldn't have a relationship with me because I deserve parents that you know that accept me because that's what you're supposed to do as a parent is you accept your children and you're there for yeah. them you know everything like that so I mean she changed her opinion on it and I and I and I do think that her maybe opinion at the time even when I look back to like my younger years you know it came out of a place of protectiveness because again gay marriage wasn't legal Get, you know I was right. born in 1993 so even homosexual acts hadn't even been legalized for 10 years so it, I think that that's definitely yeah. kind of changed you, you as know, you're, you see I, it more I think, you know, Jenny, I, and I'm obviously, I'm, I'm almost twice your, your age. And so I have a little bit, you know, I have a longer history here to, to reflect on. But I mean, I remember, you know, conversations with people in the late 90s that were very anti-gay, very mm -hmm. like we don't want them to be you know, they shouldn't allow to be married, shouldn't be able to adopt children. I mean, those kinds of things. And I must say, I, my sense, again, as a 54 year old white heterosexual male, for what it's worth, is that man public opinion changed fast. Like yeah. today, <laughs> like, oh my, you know, that seems, you know, when we talk about laws, you know, as late as 1986, you know, the Supreme Court says, you know, no, no marriage. Mm -hmm. And now it's sort of like, oh, that was, that was like another world. Like, I can't even believe that. Right. I mean, it seems to me, it seems like, yeah. wow, that really changed fast. And I'll say fast in comparison to say race relations where mm -hmm. we 
arguably we're, or I mean, we're making progress, but it ain't that fast. No, because I even, and I completely agree, because I even see, like, I notice in the media, you know, commercials, whatever, (laughs) commercials, Mm -hmm. memes, you know, children's books, movies, things like that. You're starting to see a lot more interracial couples on, like, Disney Channel kids movies because I watch those with my kids you know I see a lot more interracial and and including more races and backgrounds and you know people of different countries and religions and people of you know different genders and gender identities and all that and I see it being more included and I'm over here and I'm just loving it because I'm like yes finally and it's crazy to think that you know this was what 1967 and now we are 2022 and I feel like it's just now being normalized because I remember you know 15 years ago whatever growing up as a kid where I remember hearing people talk about commercials or movies and they couldn't believe that they would cast anyone other than this white girl to play this movie role because in the book they are white so why aren't we casting a white girl And I mean, people were losing their minds over it. We're so upset about changing anything in it or including anything than what was considered the standardized approach to any cartoon, movie, whatever, commercial. But I mean, I do. And I remember, you know, 90s, early 2000s, people were just losing their mind over it. They could not believe that people were making these movies and, and, and all this stuff and they were like infuriated over it because I remember seeing it on the news and watching it with my pan, hearing adults talk about it. And I'm, and I was just like, what's the big deal? <laughs> like, why, why is anyone even talking about this? Like, who cares what actress they casted for this? Why does it matter? What, what, what does it matter to the story? And so, you know, I, I get excited every time there's like a gay person in any movie and it's being recognized or any transgender role in anything because I'm just like thank you because you are making this small tiny little thing just just as casting a a role for a gay person or any person in the you know that whole thing but it, it does such a huge thing for so many people that it like if people could understand the how much it can just touch you and and bring you to tears because you're just so happy to see something on the tv that you can relate to and that feels so and it looks so natural and it just it just makes you so happy you want to cry because you're just like I, I know that other people are seeing this and that somewhere some little kid might see this and be like I can have that one day and it's going to be okay. That's, that's, and that's really well said. And it's just like, okay. why I think that, why are we limiting that? Why are we, why are we robbing people of that, that wonderful finding themselves experience that everyone should get to have, whether it be finding yourself learning how to play the piano or finding yourself doing photography, playing music, figuring out who you are as a person is the biggest thing that anyone can go through. And I, and I just think that I can understand you a little bit, a little bit better here because I I mean, what you said about before, like, look, this was not a choice. This was always who I was. I had, I had this identity. I had this orientation. It was always there. And so when you see other people other people like you uh sort mm-hmm. of can i use the word normalized like this is this is just, yeah these are people are these are they're your neighbors and your family members and so forth and and it's it's normal it makes you feel like hey okay i'm not i'm, I'm i I, yeah, I can be it, who it, i I'm am not alone. and i can be it, accepted i'm not alone right yeah yeah and it, and it makes and that's why it's like you know i'm sure people everywhere because with anything that's on social media or what news whatever is everyone's like I'm so tired of hearing about this I'm so tired of talking about this well we're not going to keep talking about it until 
there's nothing left to talk about until we've gotten to the point as a country to where we don't need to talk about it anymore because the resources are there, the laws are there, the, the knowing that it's okay to be gay, that it's okay to be who you are. Once I think we all get there, then maybe we won't have to hear about it so much on the media because it's not going to be an issue. I mean, I, I don't, I don't remember. I mean, I can't speak for everything because it's not like I cover every news channel, but it's like, I don't remember the last time I heard of, you know, someone getting their house burnt down because their neighbors found out that they're in an interracial marriage. Right. I, I'm not saying that it doesn't happen and that doesn't happen in other right. countries or may sure. happen in other yeah. places, but it's not something that we're hearing about a lot anymore. Why? Because it's been eight, 40, 60, 80 years, whatever. It's been, it's been a long time. And it, it's not something on the news. Yeah. That's not no, what we're it, recognizing right now because we've made it past that. You know, Jenny, as I listen to you, I also think about, um, you know, we're talking about normalization again. So, you know, the reason that human beings are the most successful animals on the entire planet is because of our ability to sort of collaborate with each other, right? I mean, we, we communicate with each mm -hmm. other very easily. We divide and conquer. We, 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 we divide up our responsibilities and so forth. But that's what makes us very effective. But the, the, the flip side of that coin is that we reserve that collaboration for people who we think are like us, right? And, and mm -hmm. sometimes that's race and sometimes it's gender and sometimes it's sexuality, but, but, but that's sort of how it works. And so when you normalize these things and say, look, I'm just like you, it sort of makes that mm -hmm. uh, tribe, if you will, you're sort of included in there, right? So now I, I don't have an issue yeah. collaborating. I don't feel, I, I feel like I can be a part of the, the group. I can be a part of the tribe. I'm like you, it's not, I'm not different. I'm the same as you in many respects, in all the important respects. And that sort of makes us, you know, more, what do you want to say? That makes us more powerful in a way because we aren't excluding yeah. people. Yeah. And maybe a and little I mean, realization for me this of, time during this podcast. <laughs> kind of like even touching on the whole like ca category, subcategories of, you know, every group. Because, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that even I feel like breaks us apart as a country is that we're still subcategorizing is and you know even as we've said before it's you know it's always been boy versus girl whites versus black right you know race versus religion everything like that class all of it and you know we've made it past interracial marriage we've made it past gay marriage gay rights certain things like that and yet we still fall down to man versus woman you know especially when we're talking about like sports you know jobs right. things like that it's like even when you talk about women's rights it's like have we not all been fighting for so long for equality that we're still fighting over the basic things of man versus woman and I just think as a country, we've, we've come so far and we still have a good way to go, but maybe there's a way to stop making it man versus woman and, and try to find maybe just, or just throw another category in there and let guidelines figure out who can go into that category if they so please. But I think that we've made it to a point where it's not just man versus woman anymore. Because mm -hmm. it, it, it's not, yes, DNA, genetically speaking, sure. But I think that we've evolved enough to know that we're more than just our DNA. Yeah. Well, that's well said. And, and probably and a, so I a, just good, feel like, a good note to wrap this up on. I mean, that's, that's really well, yeah. that's really well said. I mean, it kind of brings us <laughs> yeah. home from where we started that it's, it's DNA, but it's, you're not you're yeah. who you and are I just is not think, just your dna you know and i yeah. think another thing is part of the lgbtqia plus the biggest one that i want to touch on is the a because that's for allies and anyone can be an ally 
you know, Alan, I would consider you an ally because you're a good friend. And I feel like at the end of my day, you would probably stand up for me and my rights because we're friends and, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I would consider you an ally. I'd consider Absolutely. you part of my community. Yeah. And, and, and I, and I, you know, even though we might disagree about some things like we've talked about tonight and, and we'll continue mm -hmm. to talk about, it, I'm sure in our own conversations, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you, you're not deserving of respect and dignity and, and uh, to defend, you know, the same rights that, that all of us have. Right. And, and I, I think mm -hmm. you, I mean, in a way, again, that's kind of what this podcast is about, I suppose, is to not just talk about the things that are tearing the country apart, but to kind of remind us of the things that we have in common that pull us together. And that those are, yeah, at the end of the day, those are a lot more important, right? It's going to be messy. It's going to be think... tough. I mean, there are these issues and we got to, we got to figure them out and sort, sort through them, but there, there have to be solutions. Uh, we can't just stand in mm -hmm. our own little tribes and, and throw rocks at each other and, and uh, you know, say nasty, uh, you know, unforgivable things about each other and expect that we're going to make progress. Yeah. And I mean, that's just, that's, this is just the part of it all. You have to, you have to break a few eggs to make an omelet. Yeah. So <laughs> I think that we just need to keep talking about it, keep making people uncomfortable, keep having everyone here every side because. Yeah. That's, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to come together and, and figure it out because yeah. I think we've seen over time and everything else that we're ever evolving and we yeah. will continue to evolve past, you know, boy, girl, yeah, other category. I mean, I, I think that, I think that also as a country, we can handle it. We can handle adding another category to be inclusive we just have to figure out what what that is and what the guidelines are and go from there but it it just has to happen yeah well jenny we'll we'll, we'll kind of wrap this up i think we're at the end of our our hour here but uh yeah it's, it's a shame we we probably lost some friends over the last hour but uh <laughs> no, I, I nonetheless i must say i really uh, have in, enjoyed this and uh and learned a little bit myself once again over the course of our conversation Me too. So I, I appreciate that all right. Very good. Thank you, Jenny. Thank okay. you. You bet. Okay. Talk to you, you later. Bet. Bye. Bye.